Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about the three new Ascendancy reworks that they've been doing. Now there's the Chieftain as well, but I'm not going to go ahead and go into the Chieftain in this video. I've talked about it a lot on the stream, so I'm just kind of going to skip that one. Uh, one thing I do want to state real fast before I start this, I apologize, it's been a while since I put a video out. I was going to do the continuation of the RF series that I was doing, but ended up getting a little bored with that. And then actually, I hit a midlife crisis and some real bad personal problems that kind of occurred. Uh, thankfully, I'm getting through all that, so I didn't want to bring that to the YouTube side, letting you guys know everything's going great. Um, lots of support from my friends, lots of support from my girlfriend, so everything there is fine and dandy. Anyway, though, I uh, hope you guys like the new look. I kind of changed some stuff a little bit, fixed the lighting a little. It's actually uh, 10 o'clock at night, and it's looking pretty nice. And I can probably set up a green screen here as well. Also, the hair is looking pretty good in the bun, so I was happy with that. Enough said. Let's go ahead and talk about some reworks. Now, uh, one thing to note to you guys is uh, I do plan on checking out Melee this go around. Um, I have basically always wanted to play Infernal Blow. If you've looked at my YouTube content before, you'll know that I have played a little bit of Infernal Blow, not a lot, you know, not a lot compared to like my casters. I've done like Slayer Infernal Blow, I've done like Chieftain Infernal Blow, way back in the day, you know, PoE has went through so many meta shifts. Um, and uh, basically the conclusion I always kind of came to was you have to put so much investment into AoE that the single target lacks, or you have to put so much investment into the single target and then the AoE lacks, or vice versa, it's just too reliant on something, and it just it just never really had that oomph that made me really want to play it. Recently, Infernal Blow got reworked. What the hell is that? Recently, Infernal Blow got reworked, so it had that new stacking mechanic, and I played it recently, actually, um, in that SSF uh, uh, the the current league that we're playing like the mayhem race or flashback race whatever it's called and the character feels pretty good it's just a single target is like imagine if you're fighting shaper and you were just like flinging camel turd at him that's pretty much what the single target felt like the map clear and everything felt okay but 3.7 is directed towards melee rework and uh, mechanical changes to the core game along with how animations work so with that being said Let's start talking about some changes. I actually haven't really looked at Berserker much, so this one will kind of be new to me. So um, one thing to note is that Berserker now looks like it's a bit crit oriented. So let's start with the one, two. So physical attack damage and critical strike chance. Um, okay. Flawless savagery, 80% increased critical strike chance for attacks. Adds 20 to 30 physical damage to attacks if you dealt a critical strike recently. I actually want to check that out because 20 to 30 physical is as much as, oh actually that's more than a Died Bell, which is pretty nice. Um, died Bell does upgrade into uh, Died Bellow, which is 10 to 20, is this the same thing? Yeah, okay, so that's more than this unique. This is just a pretty simple unique, I was just curious just to kind of compare it. Uh, if you've dealt a crit recently and 30% crit multi, I mean, honestly, even as a two-pointer, that's pretty good. Like, I'm not going to lie, that's pretty decent. Um, if you're unaware, 100% critical strike chance is basically your base critical strike. So if you have a 9.6% crit weapon somehow, then you would get, you know, 100% would be an extra 9.6. So number four is Blitz, which is 2% more attack speed per Blitz charge. I don't know what the duration on these charges are. Um... I'm going to assume they're permanent, but that would not be accurate because if you think about it, endurance charges, power charges, and frenzy charges are not permanent. Um, so that's one thing. I have no clue about that. 10% reduced critical strike chance per blitz charge and gain a blitz charge on critical strike. You can, I guess, have a max of 20 blitz charges. That's something really unique to me that's a bit difficult for me to really understand right away exactly how I would use that. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, one thing off the top of my head I can say is if you have crazy damage, this is an awesome way to scale attack speed. Attack speed does equal clear speed with things like shield charge and leap slam and overall your mobility on boss fights. So that's kind of unique. I really, from a mathematical point of view, not really sure how much of a damage increase this is since you reduce critical strike chance. But nonetheless, definitely more interesting than the previous rage mechanic. I can say that for sure. 
uh, Warbringer. So this was actually the good old RF Berserker setup. Uh, recover 25% life and mana when you use a Warcry. Uh, increased Warcry duration, Warcry recovery speed. I think that's all the same. If you've Warcried recently, you and nearby allies have increased attack speed. And if you've Warcried recently, you and allies deal 30% increased damage. I think that was slightly buffed. Overall, it's still a strong node. I mean, the main reason to pick this up is, for the most part, the recovery, uh, along with the duration and cooldown. So overall, still solid. I'm happy it's a two-pointer. Uh, let's look at seven and eight. So we've got physical attack. Okay, this is just, oh, total recovery per second from Life Leech. Okay. Um, apologies if these haven't been changed at all. Let's see. Attack damage leads life, mana. Uh, attack speed if you've been hit recently, increase maximum total recovery per second like if you've taken a savage hit. I don't know if recovery was always there. I can actually check real fast if I just look right here on Berserker. Um, no, I think this was just, yeah, this is cloaked in savagery now, right? 12 is, oh no, no, we're looking at a different one. 12 is, uh, what do we just look at, 8? Pain Reaver. Ah, okay, so yeah, that's completely new. Because this used to be cloaked in savagery, which was which was basically a ton a hundred percent of damage leeched as life. But the difference between leech life is leech life has a cap, and your cap is based off your maximum health slash your recovery. So that's good. Uh, definitely something nice. Um, do, 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 do. Let's take a look at thirteen fourteen. So 1314 is going to be an uh, aspect of Carnage. That hasn't changed. That's still the 40% more with 10% increased damage taken. Very double-edged uh, Ascendancy node, but because it's a two-pointer, I think it's still you know in a, in a great spot. I'm just always scared of on-death effects, and being 10% more likely to die from on-death effects really turns me off. <laughs> Let's see, 9 and 10. Uh, crave the Slaughter. Gain one Rage on hit with attacks no more than once every 0.3 seconds. 1% chance to deal double damage per 4 rage. Uh, this is looking like a ruthless setup, you know. Ruthless is a really nice gem for that. Rite of Ruin, lose 1% of maximum life per second per rage while you are not losing rage. Effects granted for having rage are tripled and cannot be stunned while you have at least 25 rage. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the reworks. I'm going to be honest though, I have looked a little bit like Slayer and stuff. It seems like Berserker is more of like you have a build idea already, you have like solid clear, you have solid this, and you really wanna take your character to like the next level, or maybe it's just shit. I'm gonna say it's not though. Um, it doesn't seem as build enabling as other ascendancies. It just seems like really big, like raw steroids. Um, so I'd be curious to see how this works. I'm really curious on this blitz mechanic, to be honest. Something I'm definitely gonna to have to actually theory craft with if I wanna play it. Um, now, Slayer, this, is a god among men. I am among the Slayer hype right now. So before I want to go into the Slayer hype, let's just cover Gladiator really quickly. So um, this one actually, I think, notes what's new, I think. So for the most thing, most part to note what's been changed exactly with Gladiator, um, I can't tell you everything with Berserker because this one is just like the sheet. It's not like the compare and contrast. The uh, Gladiator nodes are now global attack speed. So they're not just attack speed with one-handed weapons. It used to be 5%, but now it's not. Now it's just 4% attack speed in general. Um, the, the main thing is Arena Challenger. All these are baby nodes if you look. Arena Challenger is the new one, which is 2% more attack and movement speed. Keyword movement speed per challenger charge. 25% chance to gain a challenger charge when you hit a rare or unique enemy while in blood stance. So that's gonna be more for sustaining on boss fights. And then gain a challenger charge when you kill an enemy while in sand stance. Um, so that's going to be more for map clearing. Again, on that charge, very curious at what the duration of the charges are. I hope they're permanent. I think that's too much to ask for. Really, the only thing, since I'm a lot more familiar with Gladiator than, than uh, Berserker, the only thing I'm sad to see, and I hope that they still change this, is Outmatch and Outlast is chance to gain a Frenzy charge on kill with main hand, chance to gain Endurance charge on kill with offhand. This isn't necessarily bad. It's pretty okay for mapping. The problem is, is, the, is the sustain of this, right? When you get to a boss fight, you don't wanna to have to keep pressing Enduring Cry and you don't wanna to have to manually use Frenzy because that just 
I mean, I'm sorry, but that just feels inconsistent. A lot of people disagree with that. Play Path of Exile for 10,000 hours, you'll understand what I'm talking about, right? When it comes down to it, you wanna have to press as little buttons as possible when it doesn't really mean anything, you know? Like, make the buttons more meaningful, right? Like, now we have, like, Dash and Steel Skin. I would rather press Dash or Steel Skin than have to press Frenzy every eight seconds because I have to to get 10% more damage, you know? Uh, I would like to see, I guess the word is more consistency. So maybe something like, you have a 40% chance on block to generate a endurance charge or a power charge, or you know, whenever you are in the presence of a unique monster, gain one charge every other second, or you know, something that more so fits the gladiator theme. Uh, as an example, Chieftain gets fire or gets endurance charges on fire spell cast slash fire attack, maybe something in general with fire. Jug gets endurance charges whenever they're hit. Uh, recently and they have a chance of going to max endurance charges so that like cycles itself. Occultist gains power charges per mana spell spent. Trickster gains power and frenzy charges while channeling. Raider gets frenzy charges on hit. So a lot of the ascendancies are being updated to the more um, sustainable approach and I think that's definitely a way we want to see these ascendancies going. Um, okay so let's go on with the next one. Slayer, Slayer, Slayer. So I originally was gonna play Infernal Blow Gladiator, of course, still waiting for the patch notes, very defensive, but Slayer, Slayer, let's talk about Slayer. So, number one, first thing to talk about, consistency. Um, so Overwhelm, Overwhelm is right here. It's a beautiful two-pointer, I'm gonna explain why. Do you hate crafting weapons in Path of Exile? Is it difficult for you to craft that beautiful 8.5% crit weapon with 410 DPS with 2.1 attacks per second with a tier 1 accuracy roll? Well, I hate it too. Does Reddit just tell you to go to Delve and it's super easy, but your RNG sucks? Mine too. Well, here's the solution for you. Play Slayer. Slayer states the following. Overwhelm. Your base critical strikes for attacks with weapons is 8%. No more trying to roll weapon critical strike chance. Of course, if you want to min-max at endgame, respec it when you have an insane weapon. But for people like me who are trying to enjoy the game and not min-max every single part of the game, and maybe we'll do that later, beautiful node because it allows us to start crit at an early level. It allows us to transition much easier. It allows us to make it feel better. And on top of it just being straight damage, it also gives the minus 30 crit multi to enemies. Keyword, multiplier. It reduces the critical strike damage of nearby enemies. Very strong. If you wanna know how strong that is, there is one node on the entire tree in Path of Exile that reduces critical strike damage, and it's called Indomitable. And if I search here, reduced extra, how many nodes highlight? one. Now there are other ways of acquiring it. I think you can use jewels, but for just the base that you got one. So really strong node. Um, I don't know how well it fares when you have like powerful crits, but just in general, it's a solid thing to have. Now, um, let's, let's go into some other stuff. Let's look at 12 because 12 is a juicy one. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, melee mechanics, I've pretty much been completely reworked. There's animation canceling now, weapon range actually like scales your weapon range, meaning, you know, it has like an arc in front of you. So the more weapon range you have, the bigger of the, kind of not AOE, it's more of like an arc. So the bigger the swing the arc is, uh, which is kind of like melee splash, but it's not, it's different. If you use something like Ancestral Call, they will mimic your weapon range, which gives a nice clean hit. So what this does is this gives us First off, AoE, it gives us global accuracy, it gives us melee, weapon, and unarmed attack range, it gives you area scaling per enemy kill, and deal up to 15% more melee damage to enemies based on proximity. I don't know proximity being farther away or closer, not sure on that. We've also got impact for 13 and 14, so this is a new one. Um, Oh, sorry, not impact. Masterful form. This is a new one that's pretty interesting. I see this more of like an Uber Lab point. So this one states 50% endurance charge duration, 50% frenzy charge duration. Now I told you guys before that I don't like how we don't really have that sustain on charges. I don't like the on hit mechanics and stuff. This one's a little different. 
It's different because you get 60% duration for your charges and it gives you maximum endurance charges are equal to your maximum frenzy charges. So yes, this one is not a direct cats are playing. Uh, this one is not like a direct sustainable one, but at the same time, it gives you a much bigger window to help yourself sustain while giving you endurance charges based off your frenzy charges. But not with the, Well, you know, you can read the note. It doesn't actually give them to you. It just allows you to have that as your cap, um, which is really, really nice, right? Your maximum endurance, yeah, your maximum endurance charges, not your endurance charges are equal to your frenzy charges. Okay, going with the number four now. Um, we've got Headsman. Uh, I don't think this was changed. Ten, maybe it was. I don't really know Slayer that well. 10% more damage if you've killed recently. 20% more damage against unique enemies. Um, this is looking super nice for Infernal Blow since single target was our issue. Uh, then we've got Bane of Legends. This one I do know was changed. Kill enemies that have 20% or lower life when hit by your skills. Uh, it is important to note that Slayer nodes were changed to global. They're not two-handed anymore. You can play a bow with it too. Um, so this gives you call at 20% or lower. I think that was always there. Also gives you 20% attack speed for 20 seconds when you kill a rare or unique enemy. So that's up 100% when mapping. Gain 20% increased movement speed for 20 seconds when you kill an enemy. I would probably say 20% of bosses in Path of Exile summon an add. There is a 100% chance guaranteed that there is a blue pack in every boss room for the most part. We're not talking about like Uber Elder and Elder and Shaper, even though they spawn ads, but you know, just a general map boss. So this is awesome. This is, this was, I, I'm actually so blown away that GGG actually realized that they should like put movement speed on just an enemy and not a rare, because I'll tell you what, it feels really bad to play a super fast ascendancy and then go to a super slow ascendancy. So I'm really happy to see the movement being easily accessible now. Um, like for example, Gladiator has that movement speed now. If you look, Jug has passive movement speed. Saboteur has passive movement speed. I'm just really happy to see the move. We're not even talking about Raider and Deadeye, but I'm happy to see movement kind of adding. And I know Slayer always had movement speed, but the difference between this movement speed is this used to be Onslaught, which means now you can have Onslaught with Bane of Legends. So that's an extra 20% movement speed added to the Ascendancy, which is 40% movement speed now. If you want an example, Onslaught plus 30% movement speed boots is 50% movement speed, assuming you have Art of Gladiator, which reduces the movement speed penalty. So 50% is what you're moving at. If you have a Quicksilver, you're at 90%. If you have a Perfect Adrenaline Quicksilver, you're 120%. This puts you at 140%. If you have flask effect, that goes up more. If you have movement speed multipliers, it goes up more. So every bit of movement speed really does make a huge impact, in my opinion, when you're playing Path of Exile. So next up, we have seven and eight. So endless hunger. 20% of overkill damage as leech this life. Cannot be stunned while leeching. You are immune to bleeding while leeching. I don't think that's been changed. Uh, and then nine and 10, which is going to be uh, brutal fervor. So 15% of attacks, or 15% increase attack speed while leeching. Life leech effects are not removed at full life. That was pretty much the main reason to grab this. Increased attack damage while leeching. And I'm pretty sure the new thing on here is the 6% reduced damage taken while leeching. Very good. It says 6% reduced damage taken while leeching. It doesn't say taken from hits. That means it reduces pretty much everything. Chaos damage, damage over time, upfront hits, ignite, Corrupted Blood, it's just flat out with Labyrinth Traps, reduced damage. So that's looking like a real nice node, especially because you do keep that Overleech on for quite a bit. So I'm pretty happy to see this. It's a it's a very nice mixture for me. Um, this is probably the Ascendancy I plan on playing for Infernal Blow. I'm probably going to die because I'm going to go super just, I want to try to see how good of map clear it can be. Probably going to like pick Impact as my first point and then go into headsman and then bane of legends and then uber lab is probably gonna be if i need single target i'll respec and go crit and grab uh overwhelm but it's most likely gonna be endless hunger for leech just so like i can smack a pack which is actually gonna explode like the screen um and then hopefully that like you know if i get hit i'm instantly full life from the endless hunger uh, or I can go into like Masterful Form, but I don't think Masterful Form is really gonna help because 
I don't think I'm going to the ranger side to get frenzy charges. But frenzy charges would scale, the, but like the explosions, which is pretty cool since there's like the two explosions from Infernal Blow. Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Let me know what you guys think of these three changes right now and which one you think is the coolest. So far, I'm definitely leaning with Slayer number one, Berserker number two, and Gladiator number three. Now, I'm not really disappointed in Gladiator because I thought Gladiator was always a solid ascendancy. The only thing I really would like to see on the Gladiator is the change to outmatch and outlast that's really about it and honestly they just need like one more line of text that's like 40 percent chance to generate frenzy or endurance charge when you block a hit can only activate every 0 0.5 seconds you know something just something super simple that just gives us sustain because people don't realize how much you actually block right when you have like 75 to 79 to like 81 even 50 percent block it makes a really big difference, like a really big difference. And you will generate these charges without even noticing. So maybe they don't want it like that, but still something to take a take a thought of, you know. Anyway, though, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. My stream schedule is going to be a bit wonky up until the actual league release, so it's going to be pretty inconsistent until then. But anyways, catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching.